Hey traders, Roggy here and in this free recap video we're going to take a look at what this market's doing going into G20. And there's a few things to think about. Uh, number one, where does G20 hit the market the most? I mean, there's a pretty big, broad list, actually. Uh, you know, it's not just about the Dow, the S&P, the NASDAQ, and the Russell, although all of them are pretty clearly in uh, holding patterns. As you can see, we can see the Dow shot up, holding on to that Powell rally. Same with the S&P, even the NAS, uh, and even the Russell. Russell would be the weakest of the four, then the NAS, and then I'd say Dow and, and S&P are holding on mostly to you know, the strongest, at least the least downtrend type market. So that just brings something up here. Number one, the market trends across these four are very different. Uh, this is chop, chop, downtrend, downtrend, and which is why specifically I'm much more interested in selling into rallies on the NASDAQ and Russell. So come Monday, really Sunday, we see the markets open and Asia gets to react to the G21. first. Uh, I do anticipate some strength and I do anticipate that and the NASDAQ and the Russell it's most likely to be sold into. Now when it comes to the S&P and Dow there is a lot more upside. So I'd like to see a little bit more prolonged uh, a move to the upside because it's only when we get up to some initial levels of resistance do I really want to get aggressive about either buying puts or shorting into this rally. And I do absolutely believe there's going to be a rally, namely because neither one of these two leaders are in a position within their respective countries to come back empty handed. And, you know, I think there's a few points here just to kind of wrap up what I think it is that we're going to see. And it's not really that complicated. It's, it's really just these things. There will be a trade deal, superficial at best. You know, no way they're going to you know, solve a um, multi-administration or even a multi-generational issue uh, like what's been the, uh, the trade deficit between these two countries. And that's a much larger conversation that has to do with dollar cycles and account deficits in the U.S. and a lot of other things. But there will be something superficial and the bulls who want to stay in a rally will probably get uh, what they want, at least for a little while, until we run into resistance. The market rally next week will probably last a day or three, you know, uh, two, three days. The Santa rally will be short, right? Powell, we've already seen the Powell move. We'll see some sort of G20 move. But when I say short, again, I, I am not looking for the Dow or the S&P to organize into uptrends. This is not running the February, March, April playbook again, not even close. The data in the markets, it's very different this time around, namely GDP and CPI. Uh, there are a few places that I think there are opportunities. We'll cover that in the premium video in a lot more detail, but those opportunities are going to be in places like the dollar, which we continue to be long in by shorting the euro, whether that be euro FX futures or the euro US. Uh, I've been getting a lot of questions about what crude oil is going to do. Look, I, I have to say, the only reason crude oil would rally with this news would be if that is, and it should take copper with it, by the way, would be if we feel that China and the U.S., this new ceasefire, could sort of reinvigorate both the economies for a short while, in which case crude oil would rally. But you got to remember, it's just around the corner that OPEC is going to meet. So if there is going to be a reason to rally crude, it's going to be, OPEC agreeing on some broad production cuts. I don't think G20 is a big player here. I think it's going to be more about OPEC. And I think crude is in such a downtrend that even if we get a rally, it will be sold into. So I don't think crude derails its downtrend. So we want to short bounces in things like crude and the euro. Um, and I would absolutely tell traders to prepare for the remainder of December and into next year you know, buy pullbacks in the dollar, buy pullbacks in utilities, staples, bonds, and I'm even going to start looking at housing. All right, so that's the game plan for next week. That's what I see right now, and I will see you in the next update.